Man, that takes me back to the distant past of 2011, where I basically lived Skyrim. Hello everybody, welcome to my stream, I'm playing some Skyrim! Uh, more specifically, I'm doing another of those wonderful uh, Series S test streams I've been doing. People seem to actually really enjoy these. Uh, I think it's because Series S, new console, a lot of people interested in it, not a lot of people um, buying it. <laughs> I mean, I think that they're selling out, they're selling pretty well, but compared to the Series X, uh, all the hype and all the discussion about the exciting new console uh, has been on the Series X. So uh, I wanted to show off this game because this is a little bit different. Uh, this is Skyrim Remastered, Special Edition, whatever you want to call it. I think it is called Skyrim Special Edition. This is on Game Pass if you have an Xbox. It's owned by Microsoft now. You can buy it. It's not the, the old 360 version because that one doesn't work. Uh, not backwards compatible. Evil. But uh, this is Skyrim on the Xbox One uh, playing on a Series S via backwards compatibility. Uh, and originally this remaster, it ran at 1080p. And it had a capped frame rate of 30 frames per second. That is not altered <laughs> uh, in this game. There is no patch. But Bethesda on Xbox support mods. And there is a mod that you can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to the terms of service. There is a mod that you can get uh, in this mod store called Uncap FPS. I'm just showing you where to go in the mod store. I think I actually have it installed already. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, here we go. Unca oh, there we go. It's downloaded. So, uncap FPS. Here we go. There we go. Simple any tweak. Blur, 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 blur. Uh, disable. Yeah, okay, we got this enabled, which is good. I think this should be still enabled. We'll make sure. If I kick in and it's not actually working properly, we shall see. Now, this mod was added many, many, many moons ago, as you can see. This person says, note, there may be some stuttering and screen tearing in some areas. I also don't own an Xbox One X or a One S. So this is one of those console mods that basically um, just adds uh, to the console version. And it just uncaps the frame rate. Uh, this does come with a caveat that if you are playing with mods installed, it disables uh, achievements. So while you're playing with this mod installed, you cannot get any of your beautiful Chivos. Beautiful Chivos, we need them. I don't need them, I don't care. So I thought I'd kick in, basically, because this mod, as the original guy said, start a new game, mods are currently loaded, note achievements are disabled. Go for it. Um, as you may be aware uh, from what that guy said there, this doesn't uh, run that well on a base Xbox One. You can get to 60 frames per second in some areas, in most areas you cannot. Uh, but on Series X, as a lot of people who've covered this mod will reveal, um, on Series X, this hits 60 FPS beautifully with this mod, and I believe also runs at 4K. Because this was this was a 4K enhanced game on PS4 Pro. I don't remember if I'm sure it got a 1X patch at some point. Uh, there we go. I'm trying to see. Yeah, that's definitely 60 FPS. So basically, I haven't managed to find any footage of somebody trying this out properly on a Series S. I didn't look for very long, but most of the coverage online seems to be people playing with this mod on the X. So I thought I'd pop it on the S, give it a go. Uh, I can tell you that is definitely running at 1080p. Uh, but this game, I believe, has dynamic resolution, so we'll see. Mind you, it should probably just uh, drop the frame rate if it starts to struggle. Hello. So I'm going to start a new game. Won't take me too long to kick in the... Anyone who's played the beginning of Skyrim many times can rush through that cave. Hi, how you doing? Oh, oh, let me put the subtitles on. So yeah, I thought what I'd do today, because what I'm what I'm enjoying about these Series S streams is people seem to find them useful. Uh, where have they put the subtitles today? It's a good question. Um, people seem to enjoy seeing these so they can see how stuff runs. And it gives me a chance just to play some different games around Christmas, just jump in and have some fun. There we go. Uh, so, the Skyrim Remaster, I've played this briefly, um, in French, funnily enough, when I was learning some French. Um, but this is actually a really solid looking remaster. Last time I played it, I was mostly focusing on the dialogue, but this actually looks pretty solid. 
I believe it's just taken from the PC version. I don't think it has any enhancements over that. It just runs as PC did at best settings back in the day. Alright, hello to Sinister Minister. Hello to Fuzzy who says, I can really see all 60 frames. I hope so. Uh, hello to TFG Pro who says, that looks the same as the Fallout 4 mod menu, just more scary. I mean, it pretty much is. And hello to Aspie Bear, how you doing? I'm ignoring this dialogue because I would imagine anybody who's watching this video because they're interested in how Skyrim performs. Ooh, God rays. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if anybody who's playing this has not played the beginning of Skyrim before. Sorry, mate. Death awaits thee. That was a bit of a frame rate stumble there, but that was as we were loading into the village. So yeah, this is not a tried and tested patch. This is just a, a real dirt cheap patch that just takes the frame rate cap off. And of course, because this game's from 2011, there's no like per pixel motion blur or anything like that. Or at least I don't think there is. It looks very... It's got that PC looking effect, if you know what I mean. Because everybody turns motion blur off on PC. Mad crazy fools. I wonder if Elod is still making that lead with Juniper Berries and Stick. I actually like this opening, the way it introduces you to uh the Grey Cloaks, the Imperials. Not the Grey Cloaks, the Storm Cloaks. I'm thinking of the Greybeards. Um the different factions that play in Skyrim. It's interesting. If you've never played Skyrim before, by the way, like I said, this is on Game Pass. Uh you can get it for dirt cheap on PC these days, and it's a really terrific game. Have I played the VR version of Skyrim? I haven't, no. Um, I, 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 I probably like to, but probably not enough to sit in the VR all day, you know? Hello to Parample Singh, how you doing? Matthew Francis says, hello, I never played Skyrim, I'll see any videos about it, what is it about? I almost don't believe that, it's such a famous game. But it's a fantasy RPG, like, uh, well, I, I don't want to say exactly like Lord of the Rings, but that's the genre we're in. Um, it's a big open world game. So right now I'm a prisoner. This is the very beginning of the game. I'm about to like pick a character. I started out on this prison transport with all these guys and in not too long I'm going to be kicked off into a world where you can do quests and things like that. What's it about? It's about uh, a fantasy world where for some reason dragons return after many 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 years and um, uh, you have to kind of solve the mystery of why the dragons have returned and defeat them if necessary or... But it's mostly about living in a fantasy world and doing some side quests and role-playing as an adventurer. No, don't mind me. It is running at 60 frames per second. Very solid. But we're not really testing it yet. Uh, Alright, I'm going to create my character pretty quickly. Uh, who do I want to be? Yeah, I'll be a Nod. We're playing Skyrim after all. Uh, da, 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 da. Random! There we go. Presets. Ooh, that's a cool effect. Skin tone. Whoop. Shall I go with full? I, I mean, I am basically the same skin tone as a Nod. The palest of pales. That's as heavy as I make. That's, uh, yeah, that, that was a good look. Head. Complexion. Uh, dirt. We are prisoner. Sure. Dirt color. Yeah, because I'm a Nord, like Braveheart, Scars. Let's give us some... Ooh. No, I like the, just the one strip. Should we go blue like... Yeah, let's do it. Face... Uh, I'll, just, I'll just leave that set. Um, ooh, I like that. No, not the weird... Oh, yeah, two scary white eyes. Why not? Uh, okay. Uh... Give me, give me like a warrior look. Sure, full on Mohican with a ponytail, why not? Hair color, I want something natural but stark. Doesn't matter, I'm only playing to test the frame rate. Uh, finish and name your character. Nordpunk, let's do it. We'll pronounce it Nord. Bear says, doing good. Hand pain last night and this morning from physio to get it from after my COVID infection. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope you're feeling better. TFG Pro says, the VR version is super buggy and items fly around your hands. Sometimes become backwards. People go invisible. It's funny to play, though. Fair enough. 
Parample says, Bethesda VR titles are bound to be disappointing. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I hear it's a really solid VR game doing what it's trying to do, which is be a VR version of this exact game. Parample says, if Skyrim is so good, why don't they make Skyrim 2? Because Skyrim is, like, the fifth game <laughs> in a different series. So they'll be making Elder Scrolls 6 instead. Hello to Daniel, who says, what capture device are you using? I'm using uh, an Elgato... Uh, an Elgato HD60S+. Plus. Here we go. It's time for my crucifixion. Not crucifixion, execution. Thank you, brain. So it's a little rough around the edges. Dragons! But it is, of course, still a game from 2011 remastered. A dragon, a dragon, I swear I saw a dragon! Great. All right, the game's ours. I'm very 60 frames per second. It is indeed. Okay, make your way to the keep. Which army shall I choose? I don't know. Sometimes it feels like you don't get a ton of great options here. I know you can pick different routes, but I'm the guy who every time I've played this. I've been unaware that you get to choose between two different guys. What is that thing? Could the legends be true? Legends don't burn down villages. See, I've gone with the Stormcloaks, right? But I didn't even see the other guy. That's been the same every time I've played. First time I played, I only saw the other guy. You know what I mean? This happens to me every time I play. I don't know if it's like randomly chosen or I should just be looking more. Uh, well, we got fire and a big dragon, and it's still running pretty well. Mind you, this is a very tightly controlled sequence, so... Um, Whee! Why to jump? Okay, just trying to remind myself of the controls. It has been many a year since I played this properly. Oh, and there's Hadvar! So it's later that you choose, I guess. Run! Still alive, prisoner. Keep close to me if you want to stay that way. Sure, why not? Take care of the boy. I have to find you were trying to kill me a minute ago. So we won't know how the frame rate really holds up until we get out of this opening section, by the way, because while we are kind of loaded in, I don't think we're properly in the open world yet. I think this section's mostly um Whoa. Very, very tightly controlled. Mainly because, you know, you know what Bethesda's like for bugs. Bethesda's had a bit of a tainted relationship in the last few, uh... Whoopsie-daisy. In the last few years. But, um, I still maintain that while their relationship has suffered because of, uh, id being, uh, m controlled badly and... Uh, and Fallout 76, and what was the other one? Wolfenstein, New Blood. There we go, enter the keep without the Hadvar or Rolf. Ah, uh, that's the bit you choose. Yeah, I never really pay attention to that. <laughs> I'll go with Hadvar. I like Hadvar. Brample says, if GTA 5 is so good, why don't they make GTA 5 too? Yeah, basically, right. We should keep them. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. Thank you. Okay, so I'm basically going to rush this section. I didn't have a save in place, so... Uh, I don't know why I take all this stuff. I always end up just basically overloaded. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try and just get through this whole section pretty quick, if we can. Uh, so we can get out into the main world as fast as possible. Blorp. You cannot wait in this location. I don't want to. I want to inventory. What's my? Uh, can't wait in this location. Uh, 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 uh.
What is the button I pressed? There we go! Sorry, it's been a little while since I played Skyrim, and I've never played it on an Xbox before, actually. I've only ever played Skyrim on a PlayStation or a PC. Uh, I know the controls are basically the same, but it's been many a moon. There we go. Misk. Oh, of course, it's got this thing where you go, yeah, there we go, you go sort of sideways, and then... Weapons, any magic. Right, let's go. There's a bit where we have to like fight a mad scientist, if I remember rightly. Matthew Francis says Wolfenstein is a great game. Yeah, people really didn't like. Uh, aha! People really didn't like um, Wolfenstein Youngblood, but I actually did. I played it with my buddy John. I got that um, deluxe edition that lets you play with a friend. Um, and yeah, I, I had a great time with it. He didn't like it as much as I did, but I did enjoy uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. I was always kind of... I always felt like that game got a lot of crap it didn't deserve because most of the problems with that game, to me, didn't feel like... I think because it came hot off Fallout 76, people put it in the same category. And I don't think it was, really. I don't think that game ended up the way it was because they were trying to make a microtransaction riddled mess. Although it does have microtransactions and that's uh, a shame for the game, but uh, but yeah, I don't think that's what they were going for with that one. I feel like Oh my god. You guys suck. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't have a problem with Wolfenstein Youngblood. I liked it. I liked playing in a multiplayer. I liked the boss fights. Um... Yeah, I definitely liked it more than John did. John didn't like it much at all. But then when we got to the towers, I think he warmed to it. So, uh, yeah, I, I liked that one. I would play that again. Um, obviously, uh, the moment has passed and it's one of those games where I don't think that's a fun game to play in single player. But... Uh, Time will tell. Let's see. Prample says, Hi Owen, I would really recommend you play the new Heist to GTA, even if you don't play online that much. The Heist is such a joy to play through, as it offers a lot of play of freedom. I don't really like GTA, sorry. Don't mind me, says, Hey, nice to see you again. Is it an open world game? It is! So for people who missed the beginning of the stream... There we go. Ah, this is the torturer. There we go. I'm, I'm filling my... Uh, Inventory a bit. Uh, I'm not gonna try and unlock doors. I'll go through secrets. I know I'm missing stuff if you've uh, Sure, why not? I know if you've seen Skyrim before uh, I you'll probably sit in here going he's leaving so much, but it's mostly because this episode is I Want to get to the main world and I didn't have an existing save Hi This guy's weird. Wait a second. Looks like there's something in this cage. Don't bother with that. Lost the key ages ago. Poor fellow's free for weeks. See if you can get This is one of my favorite lock picking mechanics. The only one where I feel like it actually feels like lock picking. I don't like what game is it where you've got the little balancing tumbler? I hate that one. Uh that'll do. Uh, yeah, so, for people who missed the beginning of the stream... Alright, look, if you don't want to come, don't come. Otherwise, shut your face. Oh, I actually have to talk to him. Cool. <laughs> yeah, come on, let's go then. Don't let me talk to the torturer then. He sucks. Um... So, for people who missed the beginning of the stream, this is Skyrim Special Edition on the Xbox Series S. Uh, normally the special edition is capped to 30 frames per second, but it has a mod 
because Bethesda games, this and Fallout 4, have mod menus you can access. Uh, it has a mod that lets you uncap the frame rate. You have to lose achievements for it if you really care about such things. Ah! Take that, shield! Um, you lose your achievements to enable it, but basically... Oh, where the hell's Hadvar? Thanks, Hadvar. Thanks, Hadvar. I'll leave them to you. <laughs> it's just easier to fight these with more than one person. Bam! Uh, yeah, so, uh, if you have Skyrim Special Edition on the Xbox, there's a mod menu. Doesn't work on PS4 uh, or 5, I'm afraid. Uh, the, the, they have much more limited mods, because Sony... That, God, this is a real old scandal going back to the time when Sony wouldn't let Bethesda put a mod menu on <laughs> on Skyrim and, and Fallout 4. I wonder if people remember that controversy. It was from the same sort of era when people were complaining about them not letting have people have crossplay. But basically, if you have this game on Xbox, there is a mod you can use called Uncap FPS. And what it does is it uncaps your FPS, funnily enough. It's a very well-named mod. <laughs> Uh, and if you do that, it lets you play this game at 60 FPS on console, and it is the only way to play at 60 FPS on console. But on previous consoles, it didn't uh, work that well. It only let you get to... Uh, let's see... It only let you get to... Well, it, it uncapped the frame rate, but in some areas the game still struggled to hit 30, because it often does. So, uh... Oh, I'll link that. And what can I drop? Drop that. Sure, I'll drop the fur boots. Kind of try and sell some of these. Yeah, I'll have one pair of those. And I'll drop seven. Equip. That'll do. Health and keep key. Yeah, I'll have a shield. And I'll drop one. And I'll drop one. And I'll drop one. And I'll put these braces. And drop the fur gauntlets. Iron great sword. Nah, I'll stick with the sword. I don't want a two-handed weapon. Iron wax. Eh, that's fine. So, later on you can sell all this stuff, but this is basically just about picking what items you want. There we go. We're under the carry weight now. That'll do. So, I should... Did I equip the shield? There we go. Sword and shield. My preferred way to play. I'm very boring in medieval games like this. I, I do just like the... Oh, I'm pressing X. That's why. I've been playing... Um... I've been playing a lot of cyberpunk where the button for doing anything is X, not A. Alright. So yeah, that's basically what the stream's all about today. We're, I'm trying to get to the main of the game, but we're basically just uh, testing this out. So if you see me missing secrets, not going down tunnels, it's because I'm trying to push forward to get out into the world as soon as possible, really. Um, I'm, not, I'm not building a character for a completionist run forever. Ah, uh, now, there's usually something we have to fight in here. Is it like... There we go, the spiders! Hey, how you doing? I always forget that this all goes before you've even had a chance to, like, build any stats or anything. Okay, cool. There's Hadvar. Thanks. Just late to the party as always. Ah, oh, see, I could equip my restoration magic. I like having restoration magic on your other hand. But, um... What am I suffering from? Am I... Oh, maybe I've been poisoned. Fair enough. Parample says the lockpicking in Assassin's Creed 3 was the absolute worst. I don't remember the lockpicking in Assassin's Creed 3. I'm you, I thought lockpicking in those games was just a hold down. Someone remind me what the lockpicking in Assassin's Creed 3 was. The bear! <laughs> Boom! Take that, bear. Cool. Why does that bear have nine gold? Feels like a pivotally important question. We'll be out soon. Just gonna work our way through this whole area. This whole section's longer than I remember. 
Oh, there we go. We did it. Matthew says, do you actually do anything when you pick locks in this game or is it automatic? Uh, you have to, you turn the tumblers and stuff. Where'd it go? Looks like he's gone for good this time. I didn't even see it. But I don't think we should stick around to see <laughs> So, when I pl first played Skyrim, I played it on PS3. I'm sure he'd help you out. And I immediately lost uh, Hadvar. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help. So he goes. Now, we're basically going to the same place. I never made it to that first town. Because instead of going to the town, I went to uh, this thing on the map. The Standing Stone. Uh, and did some stats there. And many things. Ooh, butterfly. Ooh, mountain flower. So, we're out into the world now. We are now in the true and official and beautiful Skyrim. If the rebels have themselves a dragon, General Tullius is the only one who can stop them. Good to know. Join the Imperial Legion. Give me that quest. I would like to join the Stormcloaks anyway. Play both sides as much as you can. Alright, so now we're free. Sod the main story. No one ever does that anyway. Hey, little fox. I will say, this game, I think it's wonderful um, how much it has uh, just a, a sense of detail and beauty to it just years on. Don't mind me, says, do you like playing first person or third person? My head starts spinning in first person. I love first person games. Much more so than third person. Who is this? Hi. Been hunting. It's not like my poaching is hurting anyone. The Jarl can hardly eat every deer now, can he? What do you got for sale? Take a look. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, yeah, buy some stuff. You want a bear pelt? You want a salt pile? Okay, she can't actually afford any of things. All right. So yeah, I mean the 30 FPS, sorry, the 60 FPS is working. I haven't seen anything that's made it really struggle yet. Um, the stuff that always taxes this game is like the dragon fights. <laughs> With all the particle effects going on. But that was like years ago. So I don't know how it's held up. Alright, well let's go to that standing stone. So now basically we're free and easy. I'm not going to worry too much about the main quest because it sucks. Um, we'll just uh, head out, find some interesting things. Have a little thing. Uh, Parample says, even with Bethesda's questionable decisions, I'm still very intrigued in Deathloop and Tokyo Ghost. I don't know. Matthew Francis says, even when I... Hold on. I'm a little bit behind. Matthew says, Wolfenstein is a great game. Even when I played the original version on an emulator, it's still great for its time. The original... Um... The original, uh... Wolfenstein 3D was one of my favorite games as a kid. Uh, I had it on an Acorn Archimedes home computer... And I loved it. And I still love it. Um, sure, let's have some iron ore. You need a pickaxe to use this. No! Uh, so, I haven't installed any other mods, by the way. I've just put the Unlock FPS mod on. Um, I know a lot of people prefer to play Skyrim with all the UI mods and stuff like that. I don't. Um, I've never been a modder in that sense. I've talked about this a few times. Where, like, I'm just not one of those people who gets put off games by UI most of the time. I think it's because, um, I've been talking recently about how I almost certainly have ADHD and I'm going through the diagnosis process right now. Um, any, all kinds of UIs that try and throw a ton of information at me, um, tend to, like, uh, like, I tend to just distance from them anyway. So, no matter how simple you try and make a UI, for me, I tend to only ever consume it in really small, digestible chunks. Activate the Thief Stone. Activate the Mage Stone. Activate the Warrior Stone. Those under the side of the Warrior will learn combat skills 20% faster. We'll go with the Warrior Stone. Why the hell not? We'll go low magic this time. It's been a while since I did a playthrough like that. Uh, Skyrim is one of the few games, well, The Elder Scrolls, uh, Oblivion, Skyrim, Morrowind, one of the few, uh, games like this where I will, uh, damn it, no, I tried, 
Uh, it's one of the few games where I will play a, a magic user because I like... I like magic in games. I don't like games where you have to, like... Like, like the Dark Souls type game where spells are this... Salmon going upstream. Sure, let's just follow the river. Why not? Um, I really don't care for games where they make you... Uh, go through hoops to use magic. Um, I want my magic to be... Like, I get why they do it, because they want it to feel arcane and... And, uh, like, uh, like you have to have skills to achieve it. But I want my magic to be controlled through the same UI and mechanics that everything else is controlled. I'm just not interested in it other than that. It just doesn't appeal to me. Again, probably because of the ADHD thing. Himantri says, do you actually look like your DP? Like my DP? <laughs> Uh, kind of. It's a self-portrait, but it's a very simplified one. I look like it to the extent that any human being could look like a drawing that simplistic. You know what I mean? Are you a ranged player or do you like to be near the fight? Uh, I, I generally don't really care for, for ranged weapons in old school games like this. Not old school games, like period games. Bows and arrows. Um, there are some games I really love the, the bows in. Um, I think the bow in Breath of the Wild is wonderful. I think um, stuff like that could be really fun. It's not for me in Skyrim, though. A dragon, a dragon, a dragon I swear I saw a dragon. That's Hadvar's house where you can go and talk to Hadvar, but we're going to keep pushing on today. Uh, like I say, we're, we're going off the beaten path today. I want to spend as much time as possible. Uh, nope, not waiting. I want to spend as much time as possible in the... Um, in the world, traveling to places. So let's pick somewhere to go. That's White Run. We can go see the Yarl. That is Mortal, which is way off there. Solitude. I believe Solitude is the town where the uh, the Wizards College has fallen into the sea. Or is that Windhelm? No, it's Solitude. Which is the first place I ever went in uh, Skyrim. Alright, well let's pick a destination and we'll head there. Somewhere far away. Let's go to... Let's go to Windhelm. We'll, we'll make the quest. We'll join the Stormcloaks. And if we pass anything interesting along the way, or fight any creatures, we'll see it. It's always fun to head out on foot. It's actually quite liberating when you know, like, this is just a stream to test out the game's technical things, and to play and see how it holds up. You don't have to be like, I'm going to make wise choices for the future. You can just be like, I'm going to kick in and play some. Skyrim is one of those games where... Uh, I don't think of it much. Possibly because of Skyrim overexposure. But then when I play it, I remember how much time I spent in my life playing Skyrim. And it's a lot. Uh, I happen to... Uh, I happen to love Skyrim. There we go, for the bunny. When it first came out. Um, even though it ran horrifically badly on PlayStation 3. I was a PlayStation 3 gamer at the time. Oh, my cat's coming to see me and meowing at me. If you hear some noises, that's my cat. Um, <laughs> she's wanted to sit on me a lot lately, which has not been great because I've been sick uh, in a way that is very uncomfortable if people sit on me. This is, I think this is White Run here, isn't it? Uh, where the Yarl, yes, coming up with it on the left. Who are these people? Oop, nope, put the swords away, we don't want to upset people. Matthew Francis says, not gonna lie, I thought that wood saw looked like a guillotine at first. I mean, it does! It's a similar kind of, uh, shape, I guess. Who are these guys? Imperial business. Be on your way. Imperial business. Be on your way. Imperial business. Be on your way. Sure, why not? Where's the weakest one? 
Bam! Something to do in it. <laughs> Potions. Cool. <laughs> oh, great. The storm cloak died anyway. Oh well. Boom! Sorry. <laughs> Cave waits out. He says, "Stab the little bastards." To be fair, I mean they 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 didn't really deserve that. They were just trying to arrest this guy for reasons I have no idea about. Ooh, Imperial Sword. I'll take that. Why not? I'll take the bow and the arrows. That'll do. I'm trying to carry more than I need. That'll do. Keep forgetting how to use the UI again. Just after saying that thing about UIs don't remember ma mattering. Matthew Francis says, does the game room be your decisions or will you be wanted now? Um, it was so, sort of, the thing about Skyrim is it's, um, it has stuff like that, but it belongs to a slightly different tradition. So it's like, um, it's like quests. So if you, uh, if you embark on certain quests, there are decisions that you can make in those quests that matter, but it doesn't really track your decisions like, um, like a Telltale game where it completely reshapes the narrative around you. Um, if you do things like, if you're in a city and you shoplift, that will set the guard on you. And your crimes are things that now become uh, registered in certain areas. But you also have to be noticed. So I killed those guys when there was no one else around. Which means almost certainly nothing's really going to come of that. When your level increases, you must choose to increase your health, magic, or stamina. You can okay. Well, we'll go with health because uh, we're going with a we're going with a big beefy soldier guy today. Perks to increase. Uh, where's one handed? That'll do. Nice basic beginning. Cave waiter says, "Well, they're Imperials. So the prisoner was a storm clock. Says enough, doesn't it?" Oh, no, no. I, I do not subscribe to this easily, uh, easily defined partisan interpretation of Skyrim. I know a lot of people have Stormcloaks good, Imperials bad. I don't think so. I think the Stormcloaks are, uh, I, they're nationalists in a way I don't trust. Now, the Imperials are also, uh... Conquerors, you know, um, they're, they're, but I don't think they're explicitly the bad guys. They're the authority, and I think, uh, it's, I think it's a nuanced situation. They've been the authority, of course, for thousands of years. I do, I do not take this, un, this, this pure Stormcloak's good approach belief in Skyrim. I am wary of the... The, the nationalist uh, storm cloaks and their their uh, their position their nod for the nods Skyrim for the nods uh, approach last time I played this it was in French by the way and what I find really interesting is in French they actually translate Skyrim they call it border seal which seal uh, is sky and board is border, rim, edge. Okay, what is this? But think about it from a tactical st st standpoint. Even if the Stormcloaks take over Skyrim, they have the Imperial City in the country right next to them, so there's a high chance they'd lose regardless. I think that's true. I think that's true. Of course, one of the things I like about Skyrim is explicitly there are reasons to uh, side with both sides. But I don't think the I don't think the Stormcloaks are like the, uh, I, I don't think they're the downtrodden minorities they make themselves out to be. I think they're, I think they're nationalists, you know? I, the thing about the Stormcloaks that bothers me, in, in a universe sense, in, in the game sense, I think they're great. But the thing about the Stormcloaks that bothers me is they're a bit fashy, if you know what I mean. That's close enough. 
Well, I want to touch the touching stone. Let's do it! I'm warning you. Back off. Sucks to be you. Iron daggers. Nah. What's this? Ancient Nord Salt, Iron Shield. Yeah, sure, why not? Activate the Ritual Stone. Once, once a day, those in the sign of the Ritual can reanimate. Yeah, I don't even want that sign. I just wanted to check what it was. Shouldn't start a fight with me, sir. I'm the player character. But yeah, one of the things I actually love about Skyrim is, of course, that the. Um, and, and Bethesda games from this era before they went mental. Um, the the attention to detail and the thought into the factions and their various uh, strengths and complications, I think, is genuinely, uh, genuinely, genuinely interesting. See you later, Matthew Francis. Thanks for watching. Cave Waiter says, I don't really give one about which side wins. I think of it as a, do I want to wear Ulfric's armor or Tullius' armor when they die? Fair, that, and you know what? It's not how I play, but it's a completely valid way to play, you know? Um. Where is that shield? I'm sure. There we go. For me, in RPGs, I, I wouldn't say I'm like an out and out role player, you know? Those people who really get a little bit too into it. Like, oh my god! My name is blurp blurp blurp, but I'm out to the quest. But, when it comes to things like choices in games, I do find the most fun is to, for me, is to like really dig into like the, the potential ethical pros and cons of it, you know what I mean? I once got a little bit more annoyed than I should in a stream at somebody who spoiled the choice in a Telltale game for me by saying, which character do you like out of these two? And I told him which I preferred. I don't remember which two characters it was. It went, okay, well, there's a choice coming up. Make this decision because that'll keep them alive. And I was like, what? Don't, no, don't do that. Why would you do that? I was genuinely angry because I love those games, those Telltale games. I really enjoy them. But for me, the experience of those games is in the moment putting as much thought into the choice as you can and then being surprised by what happens, you know? And I feel the same way in Skyrim, like, which which quest you pick and what that leads, even if it's something you ultimately might not have chosen yourself, is the appeal in those decisions to me. I gave you a chance to not to die, sir! Alright, what they got? Steel sauce. I don't have anything I want. I'll take the cheese. Onward to Windhelm! Because I'm not really playing like that today, because I've played Skyrim like thousands of hours in the past, and this is mostly about just seeing how it runs on the, uh, how it runs on the S, which is pretty good. So far, no, um, no little hiccups like that. Okay, wait, it says, spoiling an important choice in games is unbelievably stupid. Yeah, I, the thing is, like, I'm not normally sensitive about spoilers in general as a person. And when, I guess, when, when you're streaming, you have to be willing to let stuff slide to an extent. Although I'm terrible at that. I, but... Uh, people would be surprised by me saying I don't normally mind about spoilers, but the one thing that does bug me is spoilers for a game you can actively see that the person you're talking to is playing right now. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mind if I'm with some friends and somebody goes, oh yeah, I recently played such and such a game, and uh, it has this interesting ending that deals with... Because then you're in a conversation, and it's a wider conversation, and I think the the bigger issue there is to, like, slam the brakes on a conversation and stop it so the person can't say what they're saying to go no i'm planning on playing that game in six months don't don't spoil it for me 
But when you're streaming, it can actually be really frustrating if you have a busy enough chat. Because what happens is you end up with enough people in the chat who will just tell you everything that's going to happen as and when it happens. Or they do this other thing that's really frustrating sometimes where people will go, Oh, you're going to be so sad by what happens next. And you're like, that's, that's the same. You're like... The emotional effect is generated by playing through the experience. But, at the same time, you have to factor in that it's a... It's sort of an unavoidable consequence of choosing to play the game around other people. So I'm I'm learning to let go. What is this? Hey! Alright! You warned me, I went away. Jeez. You need to go in there. There are some things that I think still don't look great with the remaster. Like, this is a very... Um, this weird kind of fog effect as the sun sets is, a, I would say, a very like PS3 360 era look. And you can't get away from the fact that this is not a modern game. Um, you know, it's still limited in what it's doing. Blarp. We're basically just walking to Windhelm. Which, in this particular Bethesda game, in, in these ones, it's pretty easy to do. Because they, they level scale all the enemies, so you never really hit anything difficult. Unless you run into uh, a giant. Who are these? Hey! Need something? Cavewaiter says, I'm the type of guy to never forget a spoiler. I got spoiled about a part of Spider-Man Miles Morales and I can't get it out of my mind now. I, I can respect that. I'm, I'm actually okay with spoilers in... Like I say, I it bothers me so much more when it's a spoiler for something I'm just about to experience. Which is tricky. If it's something I heard about months ago, I can usually either forget or I can distance myself from it. Like, for example, I won't say the spoilers for anybody who may be watching, but I am a Star Wars fan and I really like The Mandalorian. And I had most of the beats of... I'd been waiting with The Mandalorian. I don't watch it week by week because I'm terrible at keeping up. Um, my girlfriend and I, we just watched pretty much all of Season 2 of The Mandalorian over the last few days. Now it's done. Um... And I'd had, like, three or four fairly major things from that spoiled. I better just drop into a few of these landmarks. I am going to do some quests and stuff. I'm just going to see if I can get to Windhelm either first or soon. Okay, right. I'm going to have to make sure I hit a few more landmarks so that if I should die, I've got a fast travel point back. Speaking of which, I should save. Did that save? Quick save. Yeah, okay, it did. Beautiful. Hey Shu says, do you like indie games? Uh, some... Uh, so I actually have a, a mixed relationship with indie games, which is... Um, some indie games I really like, but one of the things that sort of frustrates me about indie games... Uh, often they are really good, and often they are better than AAA games because they have more room to be original. One of the things that sort of frustrates me about indie games is a narrative built up for many, many years that... AAA games are all the same, and indie games are original and fresh, and isn't that nice? And then we've reached a point now where indie games themselves go through these phases where they're all quite samey, and I, I sort of get tired of it. It's kind of like, um, I recently got kind of excited. I know this is not an indie game, uh, but I, but I, I'll, it'll make sense. Uh, I recently got kind of excited by Ori and the Will of the Wisp. So I was like, well, I'll play, they're both on Game Pass, I'll play Ori in the Blind Forest. Okay, we'll stop it on here, and then we go to the fast travel point, maybe talk to somebody. Might be a good idea to save as well, so we're not traveling at night. Um, so I thought I would play Ori in the Ori in the Blind Forest in preparation for Will of the Wisp and, and enjoy it. And I put Ori in the Blind Forest on, and I did one session with it, and then I was like, I don't ever need to play this game again, because that... 2D platforming roguelike has been so done to death in the uh, the sort of Metroidvania roguelike type thing 
it, it, it's I, I feel like I've done it a thousand times now. And so I was like, well, oh, it's it is specifically an inn. Then nice. We'll get a room for the night. Did you see my husband? Poor Rogi. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Beautiful. Until next time. Is this the room? Hey! Can't sleep in an own bed. No, that means it's not mine. Which room? Which room did I rent? We'll go for 10 hours. Um, so yeah, I do like some indie games and some I just... I don't. Uh, <laughs> I've got to admit. I liked a lot of indie games. Like, I really enjoyed Braid. I really enjoyed Fez. Uh, I, I don't care for... Uh, you know, I, I think my my problem with a lot of indie games is um, I like a sort of sense of progression in games that isn't just going through levels. And that's okay. Some games I like that in, you know? And I don't mind too much if a game's just broken into stages and stuff. But uh, I'm so not picking up many quests. But I'm trying to get to Windhelm. And we'll, it's, it's a walk to Windhelm kind of stream, so we'll see. Um... But then, like, people really, really praised games like Super Meat Boy. You know what I mean? That That's, like, the indie game that most of the people who I know and respect their opinions on games, that's the one they love. And Super Meat Boy did nothing for me. Not even a little bit. Not because it was difficult, but because it was... You know, I did a few stages, and I'm... Don't get me wrong, I suck at games. I, I, I'm not a highly skilled player at all. I would have got to a point where I found Super Meat Boy incredibly difficult, I'm sure. But, to the extent that I played it, I knew... Uh, okay, I know what this is. Like, I, I I played the first... I think I did, like, five, maybe ten levels. Probably less than that, actually. Uh, and then, I, I, like, I was like, yeah, I know what this is. I know what, exactly what the rest of the game's gonna be. It's gonna be this in advancing difficulty. And that's something with indie games that tends to be an effect I get a lot. And the thing is, I totally get that a lot of people feel that way about bigger budget non-indie games, right? Like, you play the first... Uh... So maybe this is the one that fell into the sea. I don't know, it's been a while since I went down here. Uh, you know, you, you play the first... a couple of hours of... Uh, of uh, Cyberpunk 2077 and you feel like you know what the rest's gonna be. People feel that way. But there's a lot of variety to it. There's a lot of different mechanics. A lot of ways you can choose to be. Um, so yeah, I either like a game where I can go through a story in between 10 and 20 hours. Or I like a game where I can do lots of different things. And indie games often don't uh, don't encompass that for me. Uh, so yeah. So I, I have mixed feelings. Some I like, some I don't. Uh, it depends very much on the game. I can't, I can't take a general policy to it. And then there's other stuff like Undertale, which... Um, I've talked about my feelings about Undertale before, which is, for me, Undertale is, uh, a decent enough joke, and then when you get the joke, I have, like, there's nothing else to play for for me. Once you get what Undertale's doing, like, okay, it's gonna be a breakdown of video game, sort of, tropes, and it's gonna have this kind of tone and these kind of gags, uh, th that was it. I was like, yeah, no I- no secret the Aretino boy is doing some rich- Uh-huh. Trying to call the Dark Brotherhood. And who's going to stop him? Me? I'll have no part of that. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, that's that house, isn't it? The spooky house with the boy in. It's been a while since I played that. Uh, but like, yeah, so Undertale, I played it for a few hours, and then I was like, yeah, I, I know what this is. And that's, to be honest, that's the effect I get with a lot of indie games. I play them for a bit, and I'm like, I, I know what this is. And it has very little excitement for me. Whereas I love a game, like, less so since I started streaming. Look at this, this is a beautiful shot. Less so since I started streaming, because I don't have as much time for it, but I love a game that builds a world. Like, after I played Skyrim, I played Skyrim constantly for weeks. And, um, I would finish and feel like I'd been somewhere. Well, kind of. Which sort of made sense, because at that time, when I played Skyrim the first time, my life was in this weird place where I just didn't have much going on. Um, I was, like, post-university, but I hadn't 
managed to find like a proper job yet and I was in this weird place in my life and I had kind of like depression and a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so Skyrim took me to a different place. So I used to love that kind of game. These days I'm in a very different place and I like games that take me to a different place but for a short period of time. And indie games just don't do that. Sorry, this is a long rambling answer to your question, but I like to be thorough. <laughs> as best I can. Alright, let's see what we got. Quests. Okay, we'll just go speak. So, I haven't picked up any quests on my way. I mean, she says, indie games like Gree, Inside, have another feel. Yeah, in Inside is a really good example of a type of game I'm bored of. Uh, because Inside is very similar to, um... What's that other one made by the same people who made Inside? <laughs> <laughs> Hello to Joshua Forey, how you doing? So yeah, indie games, I like some, I, I, I think the, the thing about indie games is I don't, I don't respond to the idea of, do you know, it's like when people ask me how, if I like anime, and when people ask me if I like anime, I always have to go, no, but I do, like, I liked Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid, I liked the Pokemon show, um, I liked Inuyasha, I really enjoy, really enjoy Cowboy Bebop, um, I thought Death Note was pretty good. No. Um, so I like all those shows, but this thing of, like, anime as a genre that people are into, so much of it's just the same. So much of it is, uh, kind of very overblown without subtlety, and that doesn't interest me. Um... Here he is, Ulfric Stormcloak. We've met him. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my various opinions on indie games. They're alright, some are really good, most don't do much for me. But that's the truth of a lot of AAA games too, like, the, one of the most successful big budget franchises in years does nothing for me. Which is Call of Duty, by the way. I have nothing. Call of Duty is nothing for me. Was merely a message to the other yards. Don't mind me. I'm just reconnaissancing on your on your board. Oops. No, I didn't mean to do that. What say you in your defense? The people are behind you. Many are here. Smart woman. Now, come along with us. We'll take any story. <laughs> I didn't even mean to pick that up. Okay, fair enough. I used to be an Joshua Forrest says, Storm Skyrim has no impact on the choices. I wouldn't say that's true, but it, it just does it in a different way by locking and unlocking which quests become available and who you have to talk to. Hey, Ulfric. Only the foolish or the courageous approach a Jarl without summons. Do I know you? I believe we've already met. Is that so? Ah, uh, yes. You were with us at Helgen. Destined for the chopping block, if I'm not mistaken. Basically. A fair point. Well, you've come to the right place then. Speak with Galmar. I'm always looking for able fighters. Not everyone can say they made it out of Helgen. Seems we're all branded villains these days. So long as your criminal past stays in the past. You fight for me with honor and integrity. We'll welcome you into our ranks. If he's not with us, he's against us. Fair enough. Well, let's talk to Galmar. Hey. Helgen, eh? Norfolk told us quite the story. If you made it through all that, you're likely worth something to me. Now, but first, tell me, why does a foreigner want to fight for Skyrim? I'm not, I'm a Nord. Fair enough, but are you willing to die? Didn't I pick a Nord? I'm fairly sure I picked a Nord. All right, but before I can put you to use, I need to know how much you can take. I've already forgotten what I, I picked. I have a little test for you. 
That's what I like to hear. So long as you can back up those words with steel, I'm sending you to Serpent Stone Island. If you survive, you pass. If you die, well, you weren't going to be much use to me anyway. Fair enough. What's at Serpent Stone Island? Because men have tested their metal for ages. It's a strange rock formation built by the ancients. Something about that place attracts the ice raids. You kill an ice wraith out there, and I'll have all the proof I need about you. Fair enough. Does ever <laughs> I'm off to kill that ice wraith. I'll be back soon. We'll see about that, won't we? Yeah. Like I say, I'm not dawdling too much. Know that. You... How long are you going to wait? There we go. We'll quest uh, track that. Okay, Ice Wraith. <laughs> Might be a good idea. Flames, here we go. Just in case. You never know. Joshua Forrest says, I got Dragon's Dogma for Christmas. How is it? I've never played Dragon's Dogma. I've heard good things about it over the years, but I've never actually played it. Alright, let's go for it. I'm trying to remember how I've done this quest line before. I'm not sure I have. Like I say, I'm the guy who played Skyrim for months and months and months on end and never... I've probably told this story before, haven't I? That I played Skyrim for a huge length of time. Like, I really, really, really got into Skyrim when it first came out. Obsessively. Um, but I didn't... Am I going the wrong way? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I played Skyrim obsessively for many, 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 uh, moons. No, I just gotta go that way. We'll get, you know, it's fine. We'll get out here. Uh, but I never actually unlocked any shouts or met the Greybeards. <laughs> I was that player the first time. Partly because I played Oblivion where... Uh, in Oblivion, following the main quest is pretty much the best way to have a terrible time. Uh, it's quite different in this one. If you if you follow the main quest in this one, you're okay, really. Um, you you you'll have a good time. You'll have a fun adventure, uh, and it will introduce a lot of the game's concepts to you. But in Oblivion, if you followed the main quest, you would end up in Oblivion, doing those Oblivion missions. Which were almost all terrible. Himantri says, how long do you think the Series S will last? Uh, I don't know. Probably till the end of the generation. Um, I'm a big believer in the Series S. And I know a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are really down on it. I'm not one of them. Um, I think everything we've seen from the Series S has been very, very, very promising so far. Um... Before it came out, and until recently, there's been a narrative. Hello to It's Ace 2021, how you doing? There's been a narrative that, compared to the One X, it's an inferior machine. So that what they've done is they've sort of staggered the upgrades. So if you buy a Series X, you get something that's better than a One X in every way. If you buy a Series S, you get something that's better than a One S in every way. But it's still worse than a One X. I went from a 1X to a Series S. My 1X is still upstairs for when uh, I want to play a game with a disc drive or I want to watch a 4K Blu-ray. Um, this is a better experience in almost every way. The only reason right now it's not a straight step up from the 1X is the Series S doesn't get any 1X enhancements, right? So, uh, And that's because the one thing the console can't do is push for 4K. And that's pretty much because it's lacking in RAM. Uh, but what's important to understand about the Series S versus the One X is the the Series X, uh, sorry, the the One X versus the Series S is the One X was designed to do one thing very well, which was to take existing Xbox One games and up the resolution as much as it could. So it takes uh, a CPU and a GPU that are basically the same as the Xbox Ones but uh, more powerful, but the same architecture, the same structure. Uh, and it it boosts them. 
Sorry, not the CPU. The CPU is basically the same. CPU is not that different. It's a little bit more powerful, but not a lot. Uh, it takes the GPU and the RAM, and it boosts them. So the One X has a ton of RAM, and it has a more powerful GPU, but but the same type of GPU as the base Xbox One. And that lets it do it. You just you send it Xbox One code, and it ups it to 4K very, very well. The Series S is not designed to do that. It doesn't have the RAM, and RAM is a huge factor in the resolution you can reach, and the GPU is not as beefy as the Xbox One X is. But, it's a much more modern architecture, and the thing that ended up bottlenecking most games this generation towards the end of the generation was CPU power, uh, not GPU. Uh, and this is something where if we look at consoles like the Nintendo Switch, uh, the Switch is running ports of... Oh my god, a frost troll! Oh god! These things suck. Great. Uh, the... <laughs> The Switch is running ports of Xbox One and PS4 games that run perfectly well because it has a decent CPU. They just don't look. Oh, god damn it! These things suck. Uh, they just don't look up to much. This thing's basically unkillable. Great! Terrific! This is a real difficult thing to explain. So, with the Series S, what you basically get is a next-gen console that lacks raw power compared to the One X in the GPU, but massively outperforms the One X in terms of CPU. And, because it's a more modern architecture, uh, in its GPU, it can do things that the One X can't do, and it can do things that the One X can do more easily. So what you see is a GPU that basically... Um, is a much more a, a CPU and a GPU and, and an amount of RAM that in some places is higher than the One X and some places is lower than the One X, but overall uh, adds up to a much more well-rounded overall architecture for modern games, um, and that's that's a very important difference. Um, it might not seem like that means anything, but it it really does. Uh, it's, it's the difference between uh, a console that's made from old technology but is designed to do it really, really well and a console that's designed to run new games more modestly. Um, so I think the Series S, the further we get into this generation, the more people are going to find that they would much rather have a Series S than a One X. And once that becomes clear... Uh, you just won't see Series S get dropped. You'll see people bump across. Uh, people who don't want to move to a Series X yet. Anyone anyone with a One X is going to jump across to Series X anyway, because they're... to buy a One X, because it was such a modest upgrade for what you got, just for 4K. To buy a One X, you have to be... Uh, you have to be something of an enthusiast. Great, I'm now fighting the Ice Wraith and the Ice Trolls. Terrific. <laughs> I think I came... Uh, I think I, I very much... There we go. I very much came in... Uh, Unprepared today. Oh! Hence my death. <laughs> that's fine. We won't head on this quest. I guess that's the difficulty of going to Windhelm. You end up unprepared. Alright. I'll be a coward. I'll fast travel back to somewhere we'd been earlier and do some lazier quests. Sure, we'll go do some white run stuff. Fast travel to the Ritual Stone. So yeah, what do I think about the Series S? I think it'll hold up really well as we go. Um, it's important to remember a few things that I think when people talk about the Series S, it's some stuff that people forget. 
Uh, the first is that the leap from this generation, from last generation to this generation, is smaller than it has ever been. And that'll continue to be the case as consoles go forward. So uh, a lower end piece of hardware that doesn't make as big a leap is going to do better this generation than ever before. And you can see this in the fact that, you know, the the base Xbox One is still running all these games. It's got those issues with Cyberpunk, but that's more an issue of prioritization and optimization. That's going to be resolved in two months. Um, Cyberpunk will run at about 900p, 30 frames per second on an Xbox One S in about two months. It, it, it just will. Um... The, 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 because they, the problems with that game is that they haven't really trimmed the CPU usage where they should have. Um, and what you're seeing in the leap to the next generation... Oh, hello to John! How you doing, my friend? Uh, what you're seeing in the leap to the next generation is improvements in other areas. There's a reason Sony prioritized... Um, uh, there's a reason Sony prioritized what the... Oh, who are these guys? Hey, how you doing? Uh, there's a reason Sony and Microsoft both prioritized SSD drives, loading speeds, all that stuff when they first announced those consoles. Um, it's because graphics is just not where you get the biggest leaps anymore. And in that space, I think the S has got a lot of room to survive. John says, are people still complaining about the Series S? Yeah, the, the narrative that it's less powerful than the One X is still very common. Um... Uh, the, every time I do a Series S video, I get a comment underneath it from people going, from at least one person saying, why would anybody buy the Series S when the X is there? The price difference between the two is just not big enough. Um, and the, the you know, the, the simple fact is in most cases, because if you only have a 1080p TV, the difference is minimal, you know? Whoa, hello! Oh god! No thanks! We are starting to see, I would say, situations like Cyberpunk where on base consoles there is a 60 FPS mo on on uh, on Series X and PS5 there's a 60 FPS mode and on the S there isn't, but it's still backwards compatible. We don't know what that's going to look like after more patches. We don't know what that's going to look like after um, the true next-gen version. But yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's, it is... It is a constant thing for the S, really. It, it it's really struggling to fight a narrative that it's it's a downgrade from a One X because it can't hit the 4K resolutions. And to be fair, it's struggling to hit the 1440p resolutions. I think if it um if we weren't seeing games struggling to hit 60 FPS on it too, I think the conversation would be over. I think that's that was a blow to it. The fact that um, Microsoft kind of sold it as you'll get exactly the same experience as you'd get on a Series X, but it'll be 1440p instead of 4K. Had it been that, I think absolutely nobody would be criticizing it. In actuality, it tends to be more like you get the same experience as you get on the Series X, but it'll be 1080p and it'll be 30 frames per second. Um, but to me, that is a problem of how they chose to present it, not with the console itself. I think for the price it costs, within that, it's delivering really well. But yeah, it, it, it is still fighting that narrative that it's not a very good console. But what's interesting is, um, you don't meet anybody who has one that feels that way. And there's a... That also adds to a narrative that anybody who likes the Series S couldn't have afforded a Series X and it's like purchase justification. But I actually think that that's a sword that cuts both ways. Um, I think a lot of what the S has had to put up with is actually people who bought an X and need to feel like that purchase was necessary too. It, it seems to cut both ways. And of course, there is some of that. If you're the kind of person who can only afford... Am I going the wrong way? I am. I'm walking all the way back to... <laughs> I'm walking all, all the way back to Thiggy. I'm supposed to be going to um, Whiterun. Alright, we'll travel back here. I'll actually set to my right thing. Divine Hobbit says there's people complaining about the Series S. Uh, yeah, kind of. So, 
it's, uh, I just talked about a lot. I won't repeat myself again. <laughs> I will restrain myself. But yeah, Series S is having a, um, it's having a difficult time from people who don't own one, despite the fact that people who do own them seem to love it. I love mine. I, I was saying to John the other day, hello to get him J5. How you doing? That of the PS5 and the Series S, I like the Series S more. Uh, it's got nothing to do with power. It's got absolutely nothing to do with power. Um, if I if I had Cyberpunk on the PS5, it would run at 60 FPS, and that would be more powerful. Uh, if I had Watch Dogs on the Series S instead of the PS5, it would only run at 30 frames per second. Uh, well, it only runs at 30 frames per second anyway. It runs at a much lower resolution with lower quality ray tracing. Um, you know, there's there's no question about it. The PS5 is more powerful. And as we go further into the generation, those PS5 games are going to get more and more and more impressive. But just as an experience in itself, the Series S is a joy to use. It is... Um, you put it in, you put your account in, every game you've ever bought on the Xbox just works. Um... The only issue I have with it is you can't keep the backwards compatible versions once they get patched. So if you've got that small drive, you every time something gets an actual S patch, you end up having to move it to the internal drive rather than being able to run it from the external. Um, and that's such a small issue. But yeah, it's, a, it's great. So I'm just sitting here praising my S. But like this video is made for people who want information on the Series S game, versions of games and can't get them. Because nobody will talk about the S as much as they'll talk about the the X. So yeah. Divine Hobbit says, the only problem I think I have with the S is the storage space. Isn't it like 300 gigabytes? Uh, pretty much. It's uh, It's got a 500 gig drive, and then a lot of that is allocated to system space. Um, there's a small chance that might go down. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, sorry, go up. Uh, because the... As in the allocation will go down because some consoles have done that over the years. What they tend to do when they first release a console is over allocate at the beginning. Because you don't know going down the line. You know, it, it, it it's very unlikely but you might find that due to circumstances beyond your control. Some horrific issue needs you to drop a one gigabyte patch or something like that. You know what I mean? So they tend to over allocate. So that might drop as we go but I... I doubt it given given the series consoles very close relationship with um with the xbox ones the, the series consoles and the xbox ones are almost identical uh, from a user point of view i'm just gonna wait here um i don't think we'll see that drop but um yeah uh i agree the the only drawback is the space but you can take an external drive and plug it into the Series S and install all your Xbox One and 360 games to the external drive, which is what I do. I have an external drive in, it's a terabyte drive, and it just houses... Actually, it might only be 500 gigs, doesn't matter. Uh, and it just houses everything... Uh, everything that isn't a native Series S or X game. And obviously, the further into the generation that gets, the harder it's going to be. But so long as you're happy managing downloads, I don't think it matters too much, really. Um, you know, this game, I don't think... You know, I'll pop my menu on for a second. I think this is installed to the in, ex, uh, internal drive. If I just... Blarp. Sort by storage, internal. Okay, so I have Skyrim on the internal drive here. This is everything I have installed on my internal drive here, and I have 38 gigabytes free. So I could install a another game up to 38 gigs. So I have right now, some of these are small games. Destiny 2, that's huge. Falls of Fall, that's pretty big. Kingdom Hearts Collection, the second collection, that's pretty big. Model Combat's pretty big. Skyrim, which is, it's an Xbox One game, but it's pretty big. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which I don't even play, I just installed it to try out. Uh, and then a few other things. So this is just on my internal drive here. And then on my external drive. Uh, okay, so that, that's a 500 gig drive. On my external drive, I have this other stuff shifted across. I didn't even realize. <laughs> I didn't even realize Cyberpunk was on my external drive. I should move that across to the internal drive and speed up some of those uh, streaming issues. That's good to know. That 
that I'm here about the dragons. John says stacking. Uh, yeah, that was the games with gold game this month. Uh, I've never played it. I hear it's pretty good. It's a, I think it's a double fine game, right? It's the Russian doll family game. I can't believe I walked all the way to uh, to Windhelm and then realized that uh, I actually have to go back here because the quests are too difficult. <laughs> That's fine. But like I say, this episode is mostly just to show how it runs. So for people who missed the beginning of the stream, uh, this is Skyrim Special Edition. This is on the Xbox One, where it runs at 1080p with a locked 30 frames per second, the same as on PS4. But because of that whole thing where Bethesda let them put a mod store on... Uh, the Xbox, there is an uncapped frames per second mod on that mod star. If you enable it, it does kill achievements, but that's not a big deal. Look at that. That's There's some PS3 360 elements. That's why they made that wall that high. So you can't see the the grubby textures there. You only ever see it from your peripheral vision. Because once we're loaded into the town, the world gets simpler. So because that uh, that of the mods, this game has an uncapped frame rate mod, which on uh, original Xbox One and even Xbox One X struggled to actually run the game at a locked 60 frames per second. Now, I'm not, uh, uh, like, I don't have fully uh, qualified testing. This is a dead woman. Lady, could you spare a coin? Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. Divines, bless your kind heart. Uh, basically... Bye. Sure, enjoy. Uh... <laughs> Uh, if you use that frame rate mod on an original Xbox One, the results were always a little uh, shaky. You could hit 60 frames per second in certain situations, but it was rare. Xbox One X, the the frequency became more common. Uh, but this one, uh, once you get it onto series consoles, it tends to lock 60 frames per second. Um, I'm actually showing this because a lot of people had shown this on the Series X and how it ran. Not many people have showed it on the S. Obviously, I don't have a, a frame rate counter up, but I can tell you uh, I've had one perceivable drop of frame rate since I started playing it, and it was a, like a transition to an area uh, quite early on in the game. So, yeah, uh, if you always want to play Skyrim at 60 frames per second, this is on Game Pass. It runs, it runs beautifully, and I would also say... Uh, I haven't noticed any resolution drops. This game is... Uh, I believe Digital Foundry thinks this game has a dynamic resolution because Fallout 4 did as well, and they seem to be made from the same bones. But they couldn't get it to drop on a base Xbox One. John says, Yeah, it's pretty fun. I just haven't seen the game in over a generation. Josh says, Do you know Dragon's Dogma and will you play it? Um, I am familiar with the name of Dragon's Dogma. It's a game... It's one of those games where you've heard the name many, many, many times. I've never seen anybody play it. I've never heard anything about what it's about. I think it's a fantasy RPG, right? Um, I don't own it. I, do you know I might actually own it? Do you know, okay, I might actually own Dragon's Dogma. I would have to look into my library to see, but I don't know. Um, but uh, it's not on my list. If people, if a lot of people asked if I wanted to play Dragon's Dogma, I might. But yeah. Uh, as you're saying, John, yes, yeah, stacking obs relatively obscure game didn't do that well at the time, but was a very, very well regarded. Um, a lot of the games with gold games now that they have Game Pass, a lot of the games with gold games are stuff like that now. Uh, oddities from the backwards compatibility library. But it's interesting because it does give you a kind of window into stuff that might run and wouldn't run. Like, it runs perfectly fine on these series consoles now, but uh, a few months ago they gave away... Uh, it was a little while ago, actually. They gave away Republic Commando on the original Xbox on here with an HD patch. And it wouldn't run on base Xboxes. <laughs> it ran, but it, it, it would hit frame rate on, on a normal Xbox One, on Xbox One and One S. Republic Commando. They run okay now. You can brute force to the point where you can now run Republic Commando on a... What's the meaning of this interruption? Hi, how you doing? Oh, well, is not visitors. I just 
Yeah, I'm here for the dragon deck. I'm just skipping conversations. Mostly I'm just trying to get into a few interesting conversations. I'm mostly just having fun playing Skyrim, actually, because as we've seen, it pretty much just locks the frame rate. I actually, I wish more games would just put the option to unlock frame rates on. Just, just stick in options to unlock frame rates and resolutions. Because if they had, we would now have a ton of games where... But I guess they might not pass certification in that state if they would overload the console. Yeah, 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 yeah I don't need to hear this. Cool. Cool. Come on. <laughs> I've seen these conversations many times. Uh, we now, on, on next gen, we'd have all these games where they would run at, like, full 1080p and, uh... Sought me out on your own initiative. At 60 FPS. You've done White Run a service, and I won't forget it. Well, thank you. Take this as a small token of my esteem. This is great because I didn't do the original thing. thing. To do for me. Come, let's go find Faringar. My... I didn't. I didn't go to the first mission where they tell you to go see. Uh, Jarl Ulfric. This is exactly the same. Sure, fair enough. Wizard, you've been looking into a matter related to these dragons and rumors of dragons. Hey, Adam. Come to Dragon's Reach to discuss. Hmm? What? Project? The Jarl can be found in the Great Hall. Project. Yeah, he's coming to see me. He's coming. He's coming to tell you what to do. Not over here in a wizard's laboratory. Varengar. I think I've ah! You look like an idiot now, don't you? Take that, Farrenkar! Go ahead and fill her in with all the details. It seems this damnable conflict, so the Earl thinks you... Yeah, 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 yeah I'm just skipping. When I say fetch, I really... Straight to the point, eh? No need for tedious hows and whys. I like that. Leave those details to your better. Cool! Right? There's a tranquility in magic, don't you think? I am just skipping ahead on stuff, mostly because I know how to do all this. Well, I still have to talk to Farangar. Come on. There we go. Cool. I'm just trying to roll the story along so we can keep basically transitioning to different things. So far, it runs pretty smoothly, though, and I have to say, being on that internal drive has sped up those loads from one area to the next quite a lot. Compared to... Last time I played Skyrim Remastered was on PS4. I haven't played this on PS5, actually. I bet it holds up really well. Although it does not have that 60 FPS patch, because Sony wouldn't let mods be on their platform, which was sad. Joshua says, yes, it's an RPG, and it's hard. Fair enough. Um, I don't... Uh, I don't play a lot of big open world games and RPGs as much as I used to, but it used to be my, I would say probably my favorite genre of game. Uh, anything, anything with a big open world where I could just hang around. I mean, aside from anything, I used to be so terrible at games. Any opportunity to, uh, to just inhabit a world for a long time was wonderful. I cannot believe, by the way, cannot believe that I discovered earlier I've had Cyberpunk installed on the external drive. Because that is not an SSD drive. Uh, and I, when I was playing it, I was like, hmm, yeah, it's pretty good on Series S, but the loading and popping is still, you know, an issue. And I haven't had it on that internal drive at all. Which makes sense, it's backwards compatible. I've got it set to install backwards compatible games to the old drive by default. But I guess I must have... But then why did this one install here? I don't know! It's so confusing. Anyway, how you guys doing? Drop in, say hello, we'll have a chat. Playing, uh, some Skyrim. The last time I played this, uh, I was learning French. I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I'll, I'll go into it. Um, I didn't get very far into it just because, uh, something came up and I got broken off. But I was learning French, and what I really wanted to do was get more immersion and practice. Uh, and I have to say... Uh, it didn't work at the time because I just didn't know enough yet. I think I would actually do better now. Although I've I've been taking a break from my French at the moment just because I've been just busy. 
Uh, but recently I've been really getting into um, reading and uh, I, I recently shifted from... When I was a kid, I was a really, really strong reader. And I could read well before I could uh, speak fluently. Uh, according to my mom. <laughs> I will assume she's telling the truth. Uh, I think it's probably because um, I'm almost certain I'm uh, on the autism spectrum and you get a thing called hyperlexia sometimes. Uh, autistic people. Anyway. Uh, and I'm, I, I think it qualifies. But, um... Sorry, that's a, a ramble and a tangent. Hello to Stoner2424. Too far, too far. But, um... What is this? Oh, this one is. Uh, but yeah, my my main method of learning language when I was a kid... Stoma says it's Stoma2006. Long time no see. Hey, how are ya? Uh, when I was a kid was always through reading. So I was like, well, I'll try reading. So I switched to a reading first method of learning French and found that I suddenly got like way better at it. Uh, didn't help my speaking, but... I, by switching to just reading stuff using uh, a plugin on the computer that translates as you go. So you just try and read normally and then you can hover over anything to get a dictionary definition. I, like, I, I suddenly found dramatically quickly compared to how long it was taking me to learn to speak and converse. I, I was up and reading things almost naturally in like a couple of days. Which was genuinely surprised. I, I think it helped that I'd been doing it for a while before I did this, but it was it was genuinely like, oh my god, this is not a way up this hill. Uh, let's go to the map. Kind of gone the wrong way, I guess. So I feel like now, if I tried to, uh, as long as I had my subtitles on, I feel like if I went back now and tried to do, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back this way. Tried to do Skyrim in French, I'd get a lot further. But it was fun. It, it let me pick up things like, um, thank goodness. I've been wandering alone for so long. I thought I'd never see another. Oh, fair enough. Random event. I was kidnapped by these bandits weeks ago. They locked me up in the towers near Mistwatch. I managed to pick the lock and slip out while the guards slept, but now I'm completely lost. Can you help me, please? They would probably manage that. Oh, thank you. But I should be fine now that you've shown me the way. <laughs> stopped. They're at Mistwatch. Here, let me show you on your map. If you can stop them, you'll be a true hero. Thanks. Now we got something to do. Okay, see, this is a road. I went up the road previously, but then hit... Oh, maybe I just didn't find this path. Yeah, this is taking me all the way up. Where's Mistwatch? I don't know what she... guided me to. Hilgren's Tomb, Fort Amol, Windhelm, Palace... Where is it she's claiming to have come from? I want to know. <laughs> I have no idea. Matt, it's been years since I've played this game. I don't remember where any of these destinations are. Fort Castav, Windhelm, Palace of the Kings, Mistwatch. There? She's claiming that she just escaped from there and now she's lost. Fair enough. She's mad. Mad, I tell you. Okay, here we go, I think. Oh, what's up here? 
Bandits! Hi. Never should have come here. Warm! There we go. I'll take that. Hey! It's Guy in the classic Skyrim armor! I'll take that. No! You know what? Fair enough. He, he can have it. <laughs> I'll just let it go. This weird building. I love these little, weird little places you find. Usually inhabited by bandits, but they always have something of a life there. Which is kind of nice. Uh, yeah, sure. Ah, oh, fine. Uh, what do I have to drop? All... Oh. I don't have the alchemy stuff yet. That's usually a good way of getting out of stuff like this. Iron battle axe. The problem is, I want to sell some of this stuff. Some of this stuff is valuable. What about... Oh, John, let's go with the armor. That always takes up a ton of weight. Well, that was pretty heavy. Probably could have sold some of that. Okay, can I fast travel back to anything here? Sod it. Let's just go back anyway to Riverwood. We'll go sell some of this stuff. We can come back. We can come back another day. <laughs> Alright, who's gonna sell some things? Got some good pieces out here. Open war maidens. I don't claim to be Hey! Got small we the finest weapons what do you got for sale? Nah, I just wanna sell you some things. Alright, let's see. Ancient Nord Bow, Damage 9, Bear Pelt. Yeah, I have that. And a uh, high shield, sure. Imperial Bow, Imperial Light Armor, yeah, I have that. Uh, Imperial Sword, ooh. Better than my current sword. Yeah, I'm not using two handed weapons. Uh, keep that shield for now. Go with swords, so you can just have all this crap. Steel sword. Why is everybody got better swords than me? That'll do. Good doing business with. Him. Imagine he says, "When will Xbox introduce what rechargeable controllers?" They have rechargeable controllers. Kind of. <laughs> they. I, so I actually, I used to not like, um, uh, how Xbox did it, right? So, for people who don't know, if you're on PS4 or PS5, uh... will do. If you're on PS4 or PS5, which is using the gear because it just powers you up, uh, what happens is you have a built-in battery pack in your controller, and it just recharges. If you have uh, an Xbox, they don't have rechargeable battery packs in the controller, they take AA batteries. But they have a plug in the top where you can plug in and charge up a rechargeable battery pack, but it's sold separately. Now, I used to not like this system until I had multiple controllers that just just started to fade for battery life over time on the PlayStation 5. And your only solution was to buy a new, uh, a completely new controller every time. Whereas on the Xbox, every time the battery starts to go... I just buy a new Venom double pack rechargeable battery pack for both my controllers. Um, I did assume that the battery pack would be exactly the same size on the new controllers, 
um, just buy some for my Xbox One controllers and then had to buy a different one for my Series S controller because the battery pack isn't the same shape. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I actually prefer the Xbox approach. Um, the, the unofficial controllers are a bit funny because you, you can't use them with the play and charge controller. So if you plug the USB cable into the controller, it doesn't charge the battery pack. The battery pack has a separate USB port on for charging, but it works, you know, it, it opens you up to options like that by having it be a, a changeable battery pack. So yeah, it, it worked for me. John says, so I just read the synopsis to that Amelia Clark Christmas movie. Last Christmas, uh, I also, if we're talking about the same one, uh, are we talking about the, the Wham Christmas movie? Or are we talking about a different one? Is Amelia Clark in that one? If we're talking about the same movie? Oh, thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. Do you know what? Even if we're not going to talk about the same... Even if we're not talking about the same movie, I'm going to talk about this one anyway. Um, if you have not currently... Don't watch the movie, because I'm sure it's terrible. But if you have not currently just read the synopsis of the movie Last Christmas... Um... The synopsis itself is one of the most so-bad-it's-good <laughs> stories I have read in my entire life. Hello to Polar Plays, how you doing? Okay, so once again, we kind of lost- Ha <laughs> Come on! I didn't fall from that high. Whee! <laughs> it's funny. John says, yes, I thought it was. Yeah, um, so my introduction to that movie was someone on Twitter saying what I've just said, which is, if you don't plan on watching the movie, because you're not interested in a Wham! jukebox movie, uh, based on the song Last Christmas, just go read the synopsis and you'll have the time of your life. And I did. And it's great. The... I guess the, just the description of it. First of all, what I love about it is just the description gives you, in your head, a perfect image of what the movie is. Like, it just, it just beautifully sums up, okay, like, I know what this is. Like, I get it. But that, that twist is still really funny. Okay, so, we're not supposed to progress up stuff like this, so there must be a more accessible road. I've been to Bleak Falls Barrow so many times, this is the only time I've ever not been able to find the road. I guess it's because I'm only sort of half properly playing, I'm mostly into just show it off, so I haven't been really paying attention. There we go, I think this is the proper route up. On the other side of this, probably get up here, actually. Or not. It definitely feels like a game from another era, I think. Which it is. But like it hasn't... Um, I don't want to say it hasn't aged well, because I think a lot of it has. Particularly the amount of detail to everything. Which is a lot more in the remaster. Like in the on PS3 and 360, there's some of these shrubs and stuff, but there's a lot less of them. But the overall... No, this is the same way I went up earlier. This is not the real route up the barrow. Up to the barrow. That's fine, because now we know. Go back this way, find a more accessible way up. John says, I mean, who thought a literal adaptation of that song was a good idea? That's why it's so funny! <laughs> what I like about it is when you uh when you get to the end of that synopsis is the point or presumably if you're watching the movie when you get to that point in the movie it's the point when like prior to that prior to that it's not clear there we go we found the easy route the intended route 
Uh, it, it's, it's not clear that's what they've gone to. The fact that they've gone with the literal interpretation is the movie's plot twist, right? It's great. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things I've read in quite a while. There we go, this should lead us straight up. Is that where we fought the bandits? It might be. If you're watching this after the fact and you're thinking, gee, this guy's terrible at Skyrim, uh, almost certainly guilty. I, I make no claims to my proficiency. But we are really only playing this just to see how the 60 FPS holds up. Which, by the way, pretty damn good, I would say. I wouldn't say we've had any moments where this is not 60 FPS. Once again, if you just jumped in and joined me and you're curious what I'm talking about, this is the Skyrim remaster on Xbox One, which on Xbox One has a mod you can enable which uncaps the frame rate, although it does disable your achievements. Should you choose to do this, you can play this game at 60 frames per second, which didn't work that well on previous consoles but actually holds up really well on Series S. I will say, I don't know what this will be like on a Series X, because I'm almost certain it will run fine. I'm almost certain it will run beautifully. But, on, but it's important to understand that Series S and Series X aren't attempting to do the same thing. Uh, because on X, I'm fairly certain this is an Xbox One X enhanced game, so on X, it'll be trying to run at probably 4K. This game's native 4K on PS4 Pro. Bam! Uh, so... Yeah, uh, so on Series X, you can also get this mod, you can also try and run it at 60 frames per second, there is a small chance, probably unlikely, but there is a small chance that the frame rate could be worse on X just by virtue of the fact that um, X is attempting to run it, will, will be attempting to run it at 60 frames per second and uh, at 4K, which is demanding for any console. Um, but I would imagine it probably rises to the challenge pretty well. Oh my god, I've just realized it's so dark in here. I've been paying so much attention to the game, it's 4 o'clock, and it's just, it is now in Britain, that's it. That was the daylight, you guys. I would say this is the... This is where the real Skyrim begins, this quest. This is the first, it's not just the first story mission, but it... Uh, it puts you on for the path of the rest of the game. Yeah. I was going to stay away from stuff like this, but... <laughs> but the later quests, you, you can run into those terrible frost trolls and things, and those are a real pain in the butt. John says, so yeah, halfway through we realize how life falls apart after a bad breakup, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, pretty much. I am not going to be doing the claw quest. I'm just going for that tablet. Which, I believe you still run into the claw quest here. I don't love this first dungeon. In general, I actually don't love Skyrim's dungeons. Seems weird to play Skyrim and be that kind of player, but I, I just don't really care for the game when it's doing stuff like this. When will I learn? Sword and Shield is nothing compared to Sword and Fire. I feel like I'm playing Bioshock. <laughs> Alright. So how are you guys doing with Christmas, by the way? I hope you're having a good time. I'm mostly just kicking back and chilling. Feel free to drop in and talk about whatever you want. So people... This is mo really the whole purpose of this is just to get a bunch of footage so people can... Uh, see how the game holds up. Which we're doing here. Okay, so it's... 
snake, snake, whale. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, so I actually, I'm really hoping, people probably disagree with me massively on this, I don't know. But I'm actually really hoping that, um, hey, cool. I like books that give you skills, by the way. They're one of my favorite little things in games. Um, I'm really hoping that when the next Elder Scrolls game comes along, they just get rid of the, just, just get rid of the, um, There we go. Get rid, get rid of the, the dungeons and stuff. They, they The Gear series has never been able to pull them off that well. I know it's like part of the game, but it's not even what I think anybody likes about these games. I remember the last time someone was like, I sure do love that dungeon. Everybody likes the lighthouse where you find that horrible story about the, um, the Daedra in the cellar, but nobody, nobody cares about the dungeons. Aha! Well, I'm glad it's wounded. I should actually put some, uh... Put some points in, uh... In destruction magic next time. Great, now it's poisoned me. A loop. Hey, how you doing? You did it, you killed it. Now cut me down before anything else shows up. No, you want the claw and I need that. Yes, the claw. I know how it works. The claw, the mark. Help me down and I'll show you. You won't believe the power the no Sweet breath of arcade, thank you. It's coming loose. I can feel it. I've done this quest before. I know what he does. I don't have time. <laughs> I feel a little bad about that. It's burning him alive. Hey man, she says Doom Eternal didn't win any awards. Well, Doom Eternal, um... Uh, Doom Eternal doesn't... Uh, well, that's the right way to put it. People don't like Doom Eternal. That's the right way to put it. Um, I like Doom Eternal. I actually thought Doom Eternal held up better than the first one. Um, and I still think that's true. Uh, aha! Then these things come to life. See, the problem with this dungeon is... And I feel like it comes from... The fact that at its core, Skyrim's really still a PC game and they, they have a certain climate, a, a certain climate, a certain demographic that I think they're aiming for here. Um, but at its core, this doesn't feel accessible to me. And I think a lot has changed since Skyrim came out. But I don't think these days in a video game like this, you would have this first dungeon go on this long, right? I think you would end this first dungeon just before here, right? And go back to the guy and advance the quest along, and then the next thing would take you to a dungeon that was... Uh, there we go, avoided that trap. The next thing would take you to a dungeon that was, like, longer and more elaborate. But this whole second phase where the undead comes in... I mean, I guess you can go off and do the Golden Claw quest if you want, but... Not that I, like, I need it to be accessible, I've played the game before, I just... I think it's actually my problem with the dungeons in general in this game. They... They always extend a dungeon's length for you to get what you need out of it. To the point where it becomes a maze, you know? And it's a little bit like... Don't get me wrong, I... Oops. 
I like the Elder Scrolls games. But it's one of those points where it becomes... It becomes a little bit more obvious that the idea that this is a game where you can play your way is a little bit of a lie. If you want to follow the main plot, you have to... Um, you have to do these kind of missions. Uh, you know, there's, there's no way to... There's no way to progress the main story of this game as a bard who primarily gets through quests by uh, smooth-talking a situation in a bar. You know what I mean? You are going to have to do it like this. And for me, as someone who, like, if you give me a game where... Uh... Oh, man, I'm in trouble. Oh, hey, I leveled up. Okay, cool. We'll do it this way, because this will power me up. If you give me a game... Beautiful. Uh, if you give me a game where one of my skills is I can... Ah, there we go. This now takes half the magicka. Beautiful. Uh, you give me a game where I can put points into speechcraft. I want to try and... I, I want an opportunity to get through every situation in that game via speech. You know what I mean? That's just the kind of player I am. I've never once had a game where speechcraft is part of it, and I haven't tried to speech my way through the entire game. Because I, I love that, and I love games where you could do that. Um, they should put restrictions on you, they should make it difficult for sure. But this is one where speechcraft's an element of the game, and it doesn't get you out of many situations in the main game at all. You have to come to here and fight the undead. And, like, for some people, they would be like, well, that's the type of game it is. But I, I feel like that's... I guess what I'm saying is, it's at odds with the game people remember Skyrim to be. If that makes sense. John says, it'd be great if they did away with the giant spiders, too. So, in my quest to constantly fill your chat with randomness, I started the process of making my own fermented ginger beer. How did that go? TFG says Fallout be like charisma level. Depends on your Fallout game. Uh, H Bomber guy, who is a guy I like, has a a video on at the moment about how much better Fallout New Vegas is than Fallout Three. About how they're fundamentally very different types of games, even though they're made out of the uh, same engine. It's a really good video, by the way, if you're interested in game design at all. Even a little bit. I would really recommend that video. Even if you don't like Fallout games. I would recommend his video on why he thinks Fallout 3 is a bad game. Which is a couple of hours long. It's a long video. And his video on why he thinks Fallout New Vegas is a much better game. Two videos he has on his channel right now. Uh, and they're both excellent. Excellent, excellent videos. Um, his first video is about how Fallout 3 fundamentally misunderstands... Fallout 1 and 2, and his second video is about how Fallout New Vegas understands everything wrong with Fallout 3 and corrects it while keeping what works about Fallout 3, um, which I'm all down for. Like, I think it's a good perspective. It's a, it's a good game. Uh, sorry, it's a good video. Uh... But yeah, I, I think the idea that Skyrim is a game where you can you can choose how you want to interact with this world is fundamentally not really true. It's probably the better way of putting how I feel about it. Even though I like it. Uh, I've just always hated these dungeons. It's just not my kind of game. Uh, I, like, I, I don't... <sighs> hate it, actually, is the wrong way of putting it. I don't hate what I'm doing now, right? I'm enjoying this, I'm fighting this guy, I'm powering up my skills, and that's nice, and it's, it's all very enjoyable. But compared to everything outside the dungeons, I can't pretend this doesn't feel like a drag, right? It just, it's never what I would prefer to be doing in Skyrim. I would always much rather be in a situation where I'm like, okay, here is a specific point I've put into my character. Can I use this to circumvent the long, boring dungeon? <laughs> Just as I'll let you know in about seven days.
TFG Pro says, in Fallout 4, I love to just talk my way through problems instead of just fight the whole time. Plus, on PS4, there's free mods to improve the look of the game. I found Fallout 4 very disappointing, actually. And I don't know if it's because I... Um... Have I just come back the way I came? No, this is a different area. I don't know if it's just because... Um... I've talked a lot about how these days with um, with streaming, I find it more difficult to get into games as much as I used to, like the big open world games. I just find it difficult to connect with them in the same way because time, right? I'm I'm always trying to move on to something else, and if I'm stuck streaming something, okay, time to check if I've got a better weapon actually. But Fallout 4, for me, I found it. Very, very difficult. Okay, I need a one-handed weapon. I don't think a battle axe is a one-handed weapon. I don't think the great sword is either. Ancient Nord sword. Slightly higher. War axe. Okay, but that's still a one-handed weapon. I could switch to a healing spell. Battle axe, I don't think that's a... But the fire spell's just so useful. Because you can just get your distance off and just... Yeah, let's see. Uh, so yeah, I like. I wish I could say nice things about Fallout 4. I, it didn't work for me. I think part of my issue with it is... The, the starting point feels... I don't want to say, like, the same as Fallout 4 3, but it just feels like such a lazy inversion. In Fallout 3, you're off in the world trying to find your dad. In Fallout 4, you're off in the world trying to find your son. It's it's such the same tone. So I found it very difficult to connect with the, um... Uh, I found it very, very difficult to connect with the... Uh, the, the plot in the same way. And then without connecting to the plot, I, I don't have something to kind of hang my experience onto. Which I always kind of feel the need to have. I like uh, I, I like a story in an open world. Even if, um, even if it's one I've made myself. And then there were things I liked about it. I like... Uh, oh man, I always forget his name. But the, the robot uh, detective who's like the first companion you pick up. Uh, I like that character a lot. I like, I like that plot a lot. Um, I think it falls apart pretty much as soon as you get to the institute. Uh, not gonna lie, like as soon as you find your way, way into that teleporting scientific institute, I think it's a much less fun game. Okay, we put the golden claw in. Now we're going to activate the inner ring. I don't remember how to do this. I don't think it's just that the butterflies go bigger. We can try it though. Okay, so... Must be something around here. Oh, hold on, what about that journal? When you have the golden claw, the solution is in the palm of your hands. Okay, hold on. Uh, no, 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 equip. Uh, I want to look at it. Zoom. Okay, it's owl, moth, bear. There we go. Yeah, I knew it was something like that. It's just... I've been a while. 
All right, now we have to do, if I remember rightly, it's like a little boss fight and that triggers the summoning to the Greybeards, or is that after we kill the dragon? Something like that. It, it progresses the next step of the plot. Here we go. Hooray! Force! Unrelenting force! Ah, there we go. Then we fight the big tough Draugr. Who shouts, which I don't think we can do yet. Oh man, getting that destruction point was the right course of action. Ha-ha! The Dragonstone, it is ours! I should just tell you, by the way, guys, I am almost certainly not going to be kicking off a playthrough of Skyrim with this. This is just... <laughs> just for this one time, but... I am glad people seem to have enjoyed me uh, dicking around with it. Gotta get out of here now. Thanks, I'll have a giant skull, why not? What about Death Stranding? Uh, I play Death Stranding sometime. Why the hell not? Alright, back to... White Run. Whew. Yeah, those loading screens are way faster. Alright, find a stupid stone. Eat it! Eat it! The dragon stone of Bleak Falls Barrow. Yeah. Seems you are a cut above the usual brute. That's exactly what you sent me for. I did it. You'll have to see the Jarl about that. Maybe his So your cool. information was correct after all. And we have our friend. Where's the Yarl? Wait for me. Nice work. Just send me a copy when you reply to Barangar, you need to come at once. A dragon's been sighted nearby. Dun dun dun. Come to. Cause the dragon attack. How exciting. Where was it sent? Well, what was it doing? I'd take this a bit more seriously if I were you. If a dragon decides to attack White Run, I don't know who can stop it. Let's go. She said while walking slowly. Hey, I want my reward. Not so, Irileth tells me you came from the Western Watchtower? Yes, my lord. Tell him what you told me about the dragon. <laughs> no, give me my reward! I could just kill the Yarl and d destroy and take over the town. I couldn't. That would be bad. What did it do? Is it attacking the Watchtower? No, my lord. It was just circling overhead when I left. I never ran so fast in my life. <laughs> Coward! Come after me, for sure. Good work, son. We'll take it from here. Head down to the barracks for some food and rest. You've earned it. Irileth, we'd better gather some guardsmen and get down there. I've already ordered my men to muster near the main gate. Cool. Good. Don't fail me. There's no time to stand on ceremony, my friend. I need your help again. I want you to go with Irileth and help her fight this dragon. You survived Helgen. So you have more experience with dragons than anyone else here. But I haven't forgotten the service you did for me in retrieving the dragon stone for Faringar. As a token of my esteem, I have instructed Avenici that you are now permitted to purchase property in the city. That's... Please, that's not... <laughs> this gift from my person. It's not a reward. I should come along. I would very much like to see this dragon. No. All right. I think... We should fight the dragon before I wrap up. Because it is, after all, Skyrim. And the idea of doing Skyrim without fighting a dragon... ...seems like a loss, right? We don't want to miss out on that. That is the best bit of the game, surely. The 
water effects are a lot nicer. Cow's just standing there. No idea that he's about to be eaten by dragons. I do not know my way out of this town. Man, I should have got some, um... I definitely should have got some stamina. Uh, points. TFG Pro says, yeah, the guy that ran from the dragon must be able to kill him. <laughs> no, he got sent down to the, the watch. He got, he got sent down to the barracks to have some soup. John says, why does the y'all sound so familiar? Uh, it'll be a known voice actor, I'm sure. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the Bethesda games for this period had celebrity casting. This one, actually, I don't know if there is a big celebrity in this one early on. I, I think, um, I think the King of the Dragons is, um, what's he called? The, anyway, the, the, the two, there are two big character dragons in this game. They're both celebrities. But, like, this is, I suppose it's a little after that time period. Patrick Stewart was the emperor in, uh, Oblivion. John says, it's Brain from Pinky and the Brain. It's interesting. I don't think it sounds that, uh, like, fair enough, same guy. I would not have pinned that, particularly since Pinky and the Bra uh, Brain in Pinky and the Brain is a, um, an Awesome Wells impression. TF2 Pro says, no, you, the king guy sent you to kill the dragon because you ran from one. Well, to be fair, at the time I was unarmed and a prisoner. I mean, I'm here where I'm supposed to meet Irolith. What if I just wait an hour? No signs of any dragon right now, but it sure looks like you've been here. I know it looks bad, but we've got to figure out what happened. And if that dragon is still skulking around somewhere... Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure he's just hiding behind a bush. We need to know what... After you fight this dragon, it then kind of kicks off the random dragon attacks. And they are so good. One of the best little bits of design in this game is they deliberately set it up so that often before you get attacked by a dragon, its shadow passes over you, which is great. Does he? Where is he? First you hear its cry, then its shadow passes over you, and then the attack begins. Very hard to do with primarily uh, melee weapons. You gotta wait for it to kind of sit. Mermelner, take that, Mermelner. Oh, I can't believe that worked. Coming for you, Mermelner. Oh shit. One of the best choices they made in this game. Absolutely. Ooh. Poison the axe. One of the best choices they made in this game, absolutely, was recognizing that people would... Um, scrolls... Uh, people would... Uh, want to properly fight dragons. Not just like, come on, poison. Oh, I'm screwed. <laughs> I don't know how I survived this. <laughs> that went well. <laughs> okay. The destruction worked way better.
than the uh, sword. So. Fire in the left, healing in the right. Let's try it. <laughs> cool. Get the rest save us. Here he comes again. Okay, came from this direction last time. I want to see him appear. There he is! Alright, so we'll use the fire and the healing, and between that, we should manage to stay alive this time. Okay, that's too far away. Come on, come on. I've got you this time, Mermelnia! Heal, 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 heal! There we go! And the magic is always healing, so as long as I'm just careful, we'll just whittle him down. Alright, where's he gone? Rawr! Death to Mamalnia! I really, 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 really am gonna have to make sure my Magicka uh, charges faster next time. Oh, we've almost got him. Yeah. Much better approach, this one. Fortunately, they are doing damage to him, too. Great! Just to waste all that magic up. Okay. Time for me to hide. Hey! Thanks, they killed it for me. That helps. A little bit. Cool, I'll have all that. Ooh. Well, that was horrifying. Use the shout section of the magic menu to equip your unrelenting force shout. Hey, I'm allowed that now. Sure, why not? Cool. Okay, my arms are very, very, very overloaded. Ancient not great sort of cold. Ah, the problem is it's really valuable. Can I? Can I fast travel while over encumbered? I don't remember. I believe it. You're dragonborn. Uh huh. In the very oldest tales, back from when there were still dragons in Sky. Yeah, well, thank you. What are you talking about? Ah, oh, damn it. That dragon next, my friend. Okay. Uh, apparel. Apparel. I don't know why I always want to say apparel. so much stuff. Uh, sure. But, uh, oh, that's nothing compared to the other one. Beautiful. Alright. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. For the most part, just a chance to show off Skyrim in different scenarios. Me being terrible at it. Running at 60 FPS on the Series S. If you have a Series S and you're interested in running Skyrim at 60 FPS, 
you got to turn off the achievements to do it, but you'll find a lovely explanation uh, of how to do it at the beginning of the stream. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back with some more streams probably tomorrow, and then you might not see me for a few days because it's Christmas, and I'll be spending it with my family and all loved ones. Uh, you're all wonderful people. I appreciate you stopping by. I'm going to head off now, and I will see you guys all next time.